Sanford Meisner taught me how to live in the moment, how to be present, how to work off the behavior of the other person, how to be interested instead of trying to be interesting. Everything is really happening on set. I'm living truthfully under an imaginary circumstance as myself. So Kirk is Gaius, Gaius is Kirk. This is the Faith and Family Filmmakers Podcast, helping filmmakers who share a Christian worldview stay in touch, informed, and inspired. Quiet on set. Rolling. Your hosts, Jeffrey and Jacqueline Witt. Welcome back to the Faith and Family Filmmakers Podcast. I'm Jeffrey Witt, and uh, I'm excited today to have Kirk Waller with us again for our second episode. We had a great interview in our previous episode, and we learned a lot about him, his career path, and we learned about his teaching. Uh, we're going to get more into that in this episode, but also follow up a little bit more on our discussion about The Chosen. Welcome, Kirk. Thank you, uh, honor and a blessing to be back for the second episode. I didn't really go into your bio this time. So if you're uh, wanting to hear it, you have to go back and listen to the previous episode. I know at the end of our discussion, we were talking about The Chosen. And I think maybe heading a little into a potential discussion about season four. What can you tell us about that? Yeah. Okay. As I was saying, uh, I don't know what's going to happen until I get the scripts and read them. I had no mm -hmm. idea before we started season one where guys was going to go at all. Mm -hmm. And so every season, I'm just as shocked as everyone else to read, oh, I guess I have a wife. Oh, I've got <laughs> a, a son. Wait a minute. I've got two sons with two different women. What happened there? Oh, I'm talking now to Simon Peter. I'm tying knots. Uh, whoa. Okay. I'm building a cistern. You don't know until you read it. So, of course, uh, some had predicted that because I have a sick son, that I would be the centurion that asked Jesus to heal my son, which I think a lot of people saw that coming. And on some level, I knew it was coming. So as I was reading it, though, what I wasn't expecting is what happens in episode three. And that is I right. finally tell my boss, no, I'm not going to arrest Jesus, which is a huge potential mistake for my career you know, to make such a, a choice. Your but, character. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For as guys. And I had no idea that my boss was going to kill Rayma. Right. That too was a shock when I read, I was like, oh man, people are going to be so upset. I was upset. I was like, how, how could that happen? And anyway, I read them in order every season. Right, right. So I've read episode two. Okay. I talked with Matt episode three. Oh boy. I say, no, now she gets killed. I thought that's it. I'm done. I'm going to be in jail. <laughs> Serious. I, I was thinking, okay, I must be now in jail and maybe I won't be on the show anymore or something. So I sat down and started to read episode four. And right away, Gaius becomes Praetor of Cabernia. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I was, I never saw that coming in a million years. <laughs> I literally had to take a knee and read it like three times. Like, am I? No way. There's no way. I don't want to be Praetor. <laughs> I like being a preemie ordine. Um, but there it was. So that was just, I was utterly shocked by that. That was a complete surprise. And then, of course, as I mentioned, uh, the scene where I talk with Matthew and Peter about healing my son and then filming the scene to heal the son was just wonderful and spectacular. Right. So, yeah, it's, a, it's an honor and a blessing. And a privilege, honestly, of a lifetime to uh, embody that story that so many of us mm -hmm. have heard for so long. You know, yeah. I never saw it coming and I never knew it. And it's actually better that way as an actor. You know, guys didn't know right. where it's going. That's a good point. So I just yeah. found out every season where he was going and yeah. where is he going to go next? You know, in many ways, it's better that way. But he did have quite a journey in season four, that's for sure. Oh, I think he's had quite a, the whole arc from uh -huh, the beginning of the true. series to guarding the tax booth to genuinely caring about uh, Matthew and him following, Matthew following Jesus and just the whole arc that he's taken leading up to that moment where he asked Jesus to heal his son is extraordinary. Like what an amazing mm -hmm. honor as an actor to embody that. It's a privilege. Cool. Very, very good. Well, as we promised in this episode, we're going to talk to actors. We're going to give them some of your wisdom. You've already done that, but let's talk more about the Waller technique. Let's talk about what you can offer to actors that's going to help move them forward in their career. Okay. The first thing I would say uh, about acting is it's not a mistake. It's very deliberate. 
the great actors make it look like they're just talking. Uh-huh. And that's because they are. So don't be misled by social media and get rich and famous type of stuff you see. Make no mistake. You do not become a heart surgeon overnight. You do not become a concert pianist overnight, a drummer, a musician, a writer. That's right. None of this happens overnight. And because, and that's the allure of the craft of acting is, oh, I can do that. He's just talking. He's just getting mad. So it, it's a seductively, looks seductively simple, but it's not. And so if you really, truly want to have a career as an actor, you have to have a technique, Uh period. 90, I think, not to depress people, but it's actually inspiration. I think 97% of all Screen Actor Guild members make under $10,000 a year, which means there's 3%, the top 3%, gratefully, that I'm in. They're the ones that work. And the Mm -hmm. reason they're in that top 3% is because they work hard and they Mm -hmm. have become good at what they do. And they're disciplined and they get up every day to perfect that. They have dogged determination. They have a short memory. It doesn't matter what anybody thinks. You just keep going no matter what. But, you know, the actor's waiting tables. But if that actor's waiting tables, like, you got to work. What are you doing? Go work on a scene with a friend. Work on monologues. What are you reading? What are you watching? I have spent the last almost 40 years getting up every day to perfect this thing. And it's like golf. You never really do. Right. Um, I'm always trying to get better. I'm always trying to deepen what it is I do. So if you want to be an actor, buckle up because you're going to have to have a technique and you can't get lucky. Those 97% just kind of bounce around. They take a little acting class here and a little acting class there, but they don't have a technique. You got to know somebody's Mm going to hand you black ink on a white piece of paper. What do you do with that? How do you take that and bring it to life? And I have spent all these years uh, doing just that for myself. And I've learned from master teachers, as I mentioned, Sanford Meisner. There's another influential teacher, Alan Vint. So Sanford Meisner taught me the ability to be present. So I just want to go back. You have to have a technique. So go somewhere where you'll get a technique, not just somebody who's going to direct you. You know, I don't do scenes with my students until the very end. 27, eight sessions in, that's when we finally get to a scene. We don't even touch a scene because Mm. you have to start with the larger context of what the craft of acting really is. So that's where we start. And it's a sense of knowing thyself. Sanford Meisner taught me how to live in the moment, how to be present, how to work off the behavior of the other person, how to be interested instead of trying to be interesting. Everything is really happening on set. I'm not a lunatic, but I'm living truthfully under an imaginary circumstance as myself. So Kirk is Gaius, Gaius is Kirk. There is separation. I'm not some kind of weird, methody, crazy person. I'm just saying it's me. It's me Mm -hmm. and my personality. So it's a process of taking that material and making it personal. 90% of acting is knowing what you are saying and why. Mm -hmm. It's not about playing an attitude. The worst kind of acting is somebody who has an idea of how the character should sound and walk and talk. And they practice that at home over and over again. And then they get on set and they regurgitate that. Mm -hmm. What that really is, people will say, a lot of people know, like, he's a bad actor. But they don't know why. The reason they're bad is because they're lying. Everybody, as a human being, for the most part, can tell when somebody's lying. Yeah, they're not being genuine in their expression. Not at all. They're not telling the truth. The material means nothing to them. So they have this idea of what it should sound like and look like. And that's just a lie. It's not true. So that's the mistake most people make is, how did you come up with that? You have to go inside and define what everything means and why and make that personal to to Jeff. Mm -hmm. It can't be an idea. you got to make it personal. I could give some examples from the show, but... Well, I'll just give one, you know, I have a son. I have a 16 year old son. If I just Mm -hmm. sit quietly with my imagination and imagine, you know, like I do now being sick, I I get emotional right away right? because I know what it means to have a son. So my son is sick and I need help, Jesus, because he's sick. He's dying. I've tried everything. 
So you make things believable for yourself first mm -hmm. and foremost. And, you know, my technique as an overall is Sanford Meisner, learning to live in the moment, Alan Vint, there are 12 tools, which are basically a series of questions that I had read in all kinds of other books prior to, but he made it all make sense to me. So it's those two things. One is kind of the heart, then we go into the head. And then I have over the years came up with this thing I call, I didn't know what to call it, but I call it a sequential roadmap. And it is basically a drive of going through hundreds of times before I get to set the meanings of every one of my lines and what I say and what they mean to me. So I'm rehearsing basically in my head, not how I'm going to do it, but what everything means to me. And I go over that. I'm not joking. Season three, for example, I was in seven episodes. Uh, I run seven days a week. I would go through the entire season, scene by scene, episode by episode, two times, two and a half times during my run. So in general, that's the Waller technique. But to give something solid to the students out there in this limited time, always ask yourself one simple question. What would I do? If I was in this situation, mm. the writer gives us a situation. It's not a scene. It's a situation. You're breaking up with your wife or girlfriend or somebody, you know, I'll go real dramatic, got murdered or somebody cheated on you or whatever the scene is, or somebody's dying and you, what would you do? What would Jeff do if he was in that situation? That's where you start because you have to work from yourself. Not an mm. idea. I wasted a lot of time trying to become somebody else. Mm -hmm. You got to become the character. No, no, don't waste your time. It's impossible. However old you are, you've got, let's say you're 30, you got 30 years of building a character. There is no way you're going to make a character more compelling than yourself with the two That's or three right. weeks you have. It's impossible. Yeah. So always start with that simple question. You know, what you're saying sounds really simple. Yes. I mean, just do what you would do, act as you would act, think as you would think. And, and because your reasoning, your reason, your why is known to you. Am I guessing correctly that in putting it into practice, it's not as simple for everybody Well, as it sounds? Yeah, of course. But you see, that's, again, I like people who can take something that's very complicated and very hard to pin down and make it simple. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, of it is very simple. Just be you under imaginary circumstances. The notion is simple. What makes it complicated is ourselves as human beings. Your, your hang up, my hang ups, uh, how I talk, you know, my ability to really tap into myself. We spend all day and every day like avoiding ourselves and none of us really uh -huh. listen to other people. What does it mean to really listen to somebody? Not, uh -huh. you know, how many of us really listen to how many of us can't wait till the other person stops talking. So although I'm doing a lot of talking now, it's the nature of what we're doing. But the idea right. is listen. So mm -hmm. you've got to learn how to listen because we don't do it. So there are steps, but ultimately it's very simple. Yeah. Just be yourself under these imaginary circumstances. No less, no more. Don't put a spin on the ball. Don't try to become somebody else. Mm -hmm. I want to see Jeff fall in love. I want to see Jeff talk to somebody who he thinks just murdered his wife. Mm -hmm. I want to see how you talk to him. You take those words, you make them your own, and you talk to him the way you would as yourself. But it's not mm -hmm. easy to be ourselves because we get in our head about trying to become mm -hmm. somebody else. Yeah. So what complicates it would be my preconceived idea of what acting is. Correct. And what I have to do to act. That's correct. Uh, to become that character. That's correct. And that's why I don't do scene work. Well, if you are in a class, well, I, I don't want to badmouth anybody, but I just, I have to take a, you know, you do scene work and all they're doing is directing me. It's not helping me. It's like, oh yeah, just do it faster or do the opposite, make an opposite choice. Like, what does that mean? It doesn't, there's no context. That's why I start really wide and go, look, the craft of acting is really simple. And it's what I'm talking about now. That's where I start. Don't try to become somebody else. Sanford Meisner would get mad at me sometimes in a scene. He's like, stop acting, stop acting. And I, the first time he said that, I thought, oh, he's kicking me out of class or something. <laughs> no, but what he was saying, he would always say, just be 
a human being. Just be you in this situation. That's all. Stop acting. And it really takes time. You, it is simple, but it takes time to do that because we have these preconceived notions of what we think it is because we see the actors and then many of us want to copy what somebody does. Right. Like there was no Gaius before. That is a creation of me, the writers, and Dallas. Mm-hmm. Now somebody will try to maybe play a character and imitate guys, let's say, or imitate Jesus or imitate Matthew, right? But that didn't right. exist before. That is an mm-hmm. artist taking the material and interpreting that material and telling their truth in it. And that's what gets hired. Not some slick performance. It's somebody you believe. So if you connect it to yourself, look, if I don't believe it, you're not going to believe it. That makes sense. If I don't feel it, you're not going to feel it. If I don't think it, you're not going to think it. So I have to believe. You have to find a way to believe the material for the duration of the scene. Make it personal. So it's not acting at all. It's being a Mm -hmm. human being under these circumstances. Mm -hmm. And you make those circumstances believable to yourself and That's what I pass along is the process by which and how to do that, how to be yourself, how to live in the moment, the questions you ask yourself. The first tool is identification with character. And it's like, who is this person? And how is this person like you? You've got to bring yourself to the character and the character to you. You got to have to identify with who he is, what his journey is, what is he trying to accomplish in life? Where is he going? What's in his way? Like, who is this person? You have to identify. And that's why 90% of acting, in my opinion, is what, what, and why. Never how. How is revealed on set when you execute. Because you're going to work off, I'm going to work off of your behavior. How you say what you say. You're going to change how I feel based on how you're feeling. That's what makes it immediate and organic and true. Every single take. You know, the scene where... I asked Jesus to heal my son. I bet you we did that 30, 40 times from all kinds of different angles. Mm -hmm. But you have to be present every single take. And I will say this, the foundation of acting is the reality of doing. If I'm going to ask a question, I'm asking a question to get an answer. So it's not, where were you last night? It's like, where were you last night? Right. Mm Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm waiting for an answer. Yep. That's, You're asking an honest question. That's correct. Not performing a line. Nope. Where were you last night? Well, I was with my friends. Well, that's not what I was told. Whatever uh-huh. the dialogue is, it's real. So it's living truthfully under imaginary circumstances. And the foundation of acting is the reality of really doing something. Ask the question. Give an answer. Try to get this person to fall in love with you or out of love with you, whatever the scene is. You really do that. It's not fake. People don't understand that about the craft of acting. Mm -hmm. So I try to demystify it and really simplify it and get you connected with you, the human being, who you are. Who is Jeff? What, What makes you happy and sad and angry and jealous and surprised? You've got to know thyself because you work from thyself. If you don't know those things, you're never going to be able to embody a scene. So you really got to mm-hmm. be connected with yourself. Idea acting is bad acting. That's the example I gave a second ago. I have an idea of how this character is going to be. And eh, you're, right. you're going down the wrong river. It's not the right river at all. Wow. Very, very interesting. Yes, sir. Very interesting. Ever watched an unsatisfying movie and wondered why it fell flat? The premise was great, the acting was pretty good, but the story itself left you feeling just meh. Don't let those stories be your stories. In my new book titled In the Beginning, Middle, and End, a screenwriter's observations of life, character, and God, I venture into developing and writing deep characters and satisfying storylines. But not only do I explain writing techniques in an entertaining way, sharing scenes from my own screenplays, but I parallel storytelling to life itself. Discover how to be the hero in your own hero's journey, how to engage with your author, and how to recognize when he's guiding the plot points of your life. In the beginning, middle, and end, a screenwriter's observations of life, character, and God. 
by Jacqueline Witt. Available now on Amazon. Link in the show notes. That's uh, been some really, really good advice, Kirk. And I'm wondering for those listening who might be wondering how they can learn more, where's a good place to start? What would you suggest? Um, Selfishly, I would suggest I have this once a month group mentorship. It's a whopping $15 a month. Uh And what I do (laughs) the first Saturday, basically of every month is I bring a seasoned vet. I bring actors, writers, directors, casting directors. Uh, I have Beverly Holloway who cast The Chosen, Mm -hmm. who I've known a number of years. It's online in my Zoom room. I interview this person. Andy Irwin, I've had the Irwin brothers, you know, Jesus Revolution and all kinds of, you know, the list goes on. It's at actor class with a K.com. But for $15, you're in the Zoom room. I interview for 45 minutes to an hour, and then we open it up to questions. So you mm-hmm. have direct access to people who are succeeding, who are legitimate, who are successful. If you want to train with somebody, go to IMDb and see if they've done anything. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You, you got to vet mm-hmm. these people. Are they credible? Are they full of it? Do they act like they know something and they really don't? You got to be careful because there's a lot of stupid people that want to take advantage of you. And I've been taking advantage over the years as well and being conned and so forth. So that's not what's going to happen in after class. So if you come to that event, like we have one this Saturday and the guest mentor is my manager. He's mm-hmm. the guy that has represented me for 23 years and man, Mm-hmm. You want to talk to an agent, a manager, and figure out what is what are you looking for? What do you want? How do I do this? It's from the source. And so if you start there, you'll hear me and we interject things all the time about the craft. You'll get to know me a little bit more. You'll hear these guest mentors. And slowly but surely, maybe things will make sense. And you'll say, you know what? I want to take this further. And then I have I do either one-on-one sessions or two-on-one. So it's two students, one student and me, or two students and me. Yeah. And in about 28 sessions, approximately, everybody's different. You'll have a craft, you'll have a technique Mm -hmm. that you can use the rest Mm -hmm. of your life, but you got to build it. It's like a gym, man. You got to work out every day. You got to maintain it. You have to get up every day. You'll have a craft, but I'm not guaranteeing that you're going to be good at it. I'm not guaranteeing you're going to get a job. That's going to be about your discipline and your desire. Right. Yep. And perseverance. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's it's all about that. You just have to have dogged determination. It sounds cliche, but success is literally your only option. Mm-hmm. I said, I am going to make a living as an actor. And I have not wavered from that from the very beginning. My goal, I said this earlier, was to be so good that I can't be ignored. And I'm not a party smoozer guy and player and all this stuff. I just said, I can't do that. I'm just going to be good. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to be really good. And I'll, if I do that, if I keep my focus on being good, everything else will take care of itself. And that's proven to be true for me. Well, I think that's been that last minute has been a big enough nugget of <laughs> advice that <laughs> is worth the whole interview for actors yeah. who are listening. Thanks, man. Thank you so much. Very, very helpful. And I think some direction as well for many people as they are perhaps wanting to move forward in their career or start their career. And I encourage them to look up the resources that you've just mentioned. We'll certainly put the links in our show notes. So if anyone wants to to find them easily, uh, just take a look at our show notes. And um, you can always email us too. It's just hello, like hello uh at actorclass.com. If you have a question about something, you can also reach us through the wallertechnique.com. You know, it's all Mm -hmm. kind of connected, but... If you have questions or you want clarity, but I'll just say this in closing, you have to have a technique. Do not waste your time if you're not going to want to get a technique and you're not going to want to work hard. It is a very competitive business. Those in the top 3% have earned it. Uh It's not an accident. Uh Somebody can sleep their way to the top, but trust me, when they have that big role and they stink, they never work again. Right. People that are there are good It's why they're Mm -hmm. there. So make that your focus. It's not about fame or fortune. I would dig fortune, but fame, no, no, thank you. Hmm. I just want to be good at what I do. Awesome. So anyway, I just want to encourage you to get out there and go for it, man. It's possible. Thank you so much. Thank you. Really appreciate your advice and 
It's been a pleasure having you today. We've enjoyed meeting you, enjoyed talking with you, and uh, look forward to catching up sometime again. Thank you very much. Honor and a blessing to be here. Thank you for having me. Good luck, everyone. God bless. God bless you. Thanks for listening to the Faith and Family Filmmakers Podcast. If you would like email reminders about newly released episodes and more, please sign up at faffpodcast.com slash email. That's faffpodcast.com slash email. Bringing filmmakers together for faith and family. That's a wrap.